Hello everybody. This video I'd like to take a closer look at the 32nd path of the Tree of Life, uh, represented by the World Card in Tarot. We'll take the Hermetic versions of the Tarot as subjects to study, in tandem with what is written in the Sefer Yetzirah, the Bahir and of course the Zohar. In another video, The Fruit of Consent, I've touched on the four worlds briefly, explaining their attributes and their respective role in the continuum of creation. The world card is the culmination of said worlds, and so it is aptly called the world. Within the Zoharic tradition, the world, or Olam, is also likened to the word hidden. It hints after hidden worlds behind the world, the essence of Tav, or the final He, is the very essence of a force called Shekhinah, the bright of God. In Crowley's instance, this would be represented by Babylon instead. The 32nd path is revealed to be the following. It's called Worshipped Consciousness, and it is called this because it is prepared so as to destroy all who engage in the worship of the seven planets. Uh, this is taken from the Sefer Yetzera uh, and translated by Arya Kaplan. It is rather severe and it has very little explanation and there are no footnotes for me to work with. But uh, the Bahir, which is a great way to cross-reference anything, if you can't understand what is happening in Sefer Yetzera, the Bahir will usually highlight or illuminate what is going on. And so, within the Bahir, also translated by Arye, uh, reveals that there are two modes to Yesod, the foundation of the world. Uh, one is of celibacy, which is Yesod and Mahud are not connected. As you can see here, there's the connection here through the world card Tav. And Yesod seeks to connect with Mahud. The masculine seeks to connect with the feminine here. And here it said that the feminine is judgment. This mode is called the tzaddik. So when there's no connection between the two, the nine or yesod is considered the tzaddik or the righteous. And then there's one of intercourse. Yesod and mochot do form a union. The feminine connects with ze'er anpin. The ze'er anpin are the six pharaohs that surround Tiferet before they are channeled into mochot. Uh, this mode is called chai. And because of this, we can then determine that there is a connection with the chariot card in more than one way. Because of the word chai, and the chariot is associated with geit. However, the chariot also has a connection to bina. It is born from bina, and malchot and bina, mother and daughter, as they would say, or the higher shechina and the lower Shekhinah are always connected. We can see that through the relationship that the queen has with the page in tarot. So another thing that might be of interest to add, but I don't want to make it too complicated, I guess, but it is interesting to, to note is that, as I was talking about the hidden worlds, the implication of hidden worlds behind the world, Right, and it, the culmination of all four worlds is seen within the world card itself. Is that the letter Geit, which corresponds to Chai, to life or Chaya, it corresponds to what is beyond the essence of creation. And this is because it's the eighth letter, the number eight in Kabbalah represents basically the metaphysical. And it is, uh, God does not reside in the world. It does not reside within the uh, creation itself. It does not have, God does not have a throne in the kingdom. But with the number eight, it is implied that we go beyond the number seven, beyond creation, and therefore find nearness with God, for that is where God is. So, from this condensed amount of information, if we were to strip away all that we know of the world card from the little white book, we'd be able to rediscover its meanings once again, and understand why the world card has come to mean an ending, yet also a new cycle that is about to commence. We can see why a woman was depicted on the card. 
As seen within the Bahir, translated and expanded upon by Arya Kaplan, we understand that the world, as visible within the Tree of Life diagram too, represents the pathway between Mahod and Yasod. Mahod represents our world, Olam Asiya, or also named the world of action, the kingdom. In previous video uh, about the aspects of Mem and its ties to the death card, the essence of Tav and He were briefly mentioned within the footnotes provided by Daniel Matt. Here he reveals that both Tav, the last and final letter of the Hebrew Aleph Beit, and the letter He are feminine by nature and are representative of the essence of Shekhinah. It is even so that there is a higher Shekhinah and a lower Shekhinah by studying the tetragrammaton of God's name. So we understand why there's a woman pictured on the card. We understand it's the ending, for we aspire the finality of creation, yet we also initiate a new cycle. For the extension of Yesu to Mahod resembles the masculine and feminine coming into union. Together they give birth to a new generation. Anyway, as seen within the traditional meanings of the Kabbalah, which may not line up entirely, but broadly with the hermetic ones, we understand that the world represents unity with Yesod. A really close vicinity of the information that I am referencing to, I found something else rather interesting that I want to touch upon briefly. So, the Divine Feminine, remember Shekhinah is Divine Feminine, Bride of God, has two rods in each hand. I figured it probably has something to do with duality, but that's not the interesting part. Within the Hermetic Tree of Life, on one hand we see judgment, a sign Sheen, running from Chod to Mahod, and on the other hand we can find the Moon, a sign Kuf. Within the Bahir, parts 73 and 74, with annotations from Arya Kaplan himself, it is revealed that when Mahod and Yeso do not form a union, the feminine is judgment. And along with that, it is mentioned that Zair Ampin, the aspect of Yetzirah, associated with the number six or the masculine force, represents day, and the moon represents the feminine. Together, the judgment and the moon cards touch on the Sferod called the Shechanim, forming the aspect of prophecy, a story as mentioned in the Bahir that alludes to the two working in harmonious setting to one another, important for the respective health of Yesod, is the story about the revelation on the Mount Sinai. So we see the total picture here at the lower rungs of the Tree of Life, of the feminine aspect of God, corresponding to Tav and to the final He. So these elements were intentionally placed along the Tree of Life. We can also look at the Chayot, understanding that prophecy is a part of the world, as she unites with Yesod, and therefore unites the Shechanim, she becomes Chai, or alive. There's something to be said about Eve, or Chava, perhaps, and also about Chaya, the highest octave of a soul, that is divinely expressed. And so we see a cross-reference with the Chayot, which is plural of Chaya, which means living creatures, as seen by Ezekiel. So this really makes a lot of sense because of the wordplay and the implications of the card's placement. And it's quite amazing because Kabbalah never, never really disappoints in that sense.